Hello my dear friends, you're on the Military Summary channel and this short video we're going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous night of the local time. We have lots of very interesting updates, so let's start. First we're going to talk about Ukraine, about Kyiv, about air defense. During the previous night the Russians conducted massive missile strike all over the entire territory of Ukraine. The Russians also were attacking Ukraine with drones. On this small map we can see the areas of main explosions and according to this configuration we see that the Russians were targeting Kyiv. It's very difficult to understand why exactly the Russians decided to bomb and attack Kyiv. During this morning and the previous night we got lots of videos, some of most of them were blurred by the Ukrainian sources, of the results of those strikes, a lot of explosions, a lot of fires and so on. And this is the picture of roads of Russian attacks and there are very interesting details. For example, I would like to point your attention to two points. First, there was one ballistic strike in direction of Odessa and according to Ukrainian Minister defense air defense report they haven't managed to destroy that so let's say ballistic missile and we have very interesting point a small yellow ring ring in the vicinity of Poltava so one Russian drone a Geran drone was flying above this territory for a very long time trying to discover you can air defense positions or to reveal their air defense systems to let's say uh, or to force the Ukrainians to reveal their own air defense force but probably uh, they uh, couldn't do this and they continue flying further to the west. So most likely the Russians attacked Kyiv during the previous night because the Russians got the information that Ukrainians, uh, uh, that the Western countries or Ukrainians received additional batch of Patriot systems. For example, US uh, President Joe Biden has approved the deployment of an additional Patriot surface to air missile battery to Ukrainian air forces, the second battery to be provided directly by the United States to Ukraine. Also yesterday we have very interesting, let's say, photos and videos from Germany where Olaf Scholz also promised to send Ukraine an additional air defense system Patriot and Zelensky was exactly around the Patriot system that Germany should send in the, next, in the, in the very near future but most likely some of these air defense systems have already arrived on Ukraine. And it's very important to understand what is the main purpose and the main, let's say, reason and the main goals of these air defense systems. The thing is that Western countries didn't decide at once to start supporting Ukraine with significant number of Patriot systems because they care about the future, many, many other things. The most reason, the most important reason why the Western countries decided to send significant number of air defense systems at once is that in the very near future, probably after the NATO summit in the Washington that is going to take place in July of 2024, the Western countries are going to start sending their military experts, military forces, forces on the territory of Ukraine. So that's why before that they just want to secure the sky and they just want to be on the safe side when the first units or first forces arrives on the territory of Ukraine. They just don't want to be attacked by the Russians Iskander and they just want, don't want to suffer significant losses during the first days of this redeployment. So probably this is it. Also, uh, Western sources reported that Western wa weapon wi weapons will last Ukraine for 6 to 12 months. Supplies are drying up to due to lack of budget. So we'll see, of course, what is going to be next. But uh, probably by the time the supplies uh, are dried completely, additional, let's say, military help will be adopted by the United States of America. Now let's move to the line of combat contact. We have lots of very interesting reports and the most important are coming from the western Avdeevka or Achiretina direction. The Russians continue their offensive operation in the northwestern direction towards Vazdvizhenka and a According to some Russian sources, more or less reliable, telling the truth, the Russians established complete control over this dam. So to summarize everything we received during the previous night, this is approximately the territory that is already under complete Russian control. Significant progress, obviously, the Ukrainians lost Novoalexandrovka completely and most likely today the Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation or maybe tomorrow or the day after. So by the end of this weekend, obviously, the Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation Federation will confirm this information and will include these updates into the Ministry of Defense report. Also, we have uh, interesting reports from the western of Diyevka area 
The Russians continue hunting and destroying Ukrainian armored vehicles. Another destroyed Bradley in Abrams Bradley Cemetery that was created, had been created recently uh, to the west uh, of Avdiivka. And we have additional report about additional Russian progress from Solovyovo to Novopokrovska. According to pro-Ukrainian mappers, the Russians established complete control, or at least the Russians control, let's say, 60% of Novopokrovska and the rest 40% are in the gray zone so this is the current situation in the area and we can make a conclusion that the official battle for Novoselovka Pirsha has started and the thing is that Ukrainians as we discussed in the previous videos decided to start evacuation they started let's say moving armored vehicles as close as possible to Novoselovka Pirsha and of course the Ukrainians uh, suppose and try think that they're going to use this road for evacuation to Zhelanna but today the Russian sources published the video how they damaged and destroyed the dam once again. This dam was destroyed probably two or three times since the beginning of battle for this artillery pocket and uh, usually the Ukrainians uh, let's say restored the dam after a few days of the dam was destroyed but as I understand now the Ukrainians don't have this time and I expect that sooner or later the disorganized evacuation is going to start it from the Ukrainian side. Now we are moving in direction of Krasnogorovka. After a very long operational pause, the Russians renewed their attempts to attack the village by the name of Nivoyska. This village used to be already under Russian control, but the Ukrainians organized few counterattacks and the Russians were forced to fall back. But now the Russians decided to renew their attempts to establish complete control over the territory and according to some sources, the first Russian squads entered the territory. Now let's move to the south in the southern direction, in South Denis direction we have additional updates we don't have any geolocations but we have a lot of very interesting posts according to information we received during the previous night or during the previous few days the Ukrainian um, let's say head of Ukrainian army Sirsky arrived in South Donetsk direction he was talking with the generals with the commanders of battalions and brigades received in necessary information made his own conclusions and left the foothold the soldiers on the ground currently don't know exactly what kind of decisions uh, the uh, were let's say made by the the Ukrainian military authorities, but everybody expects that something bad is going to happen during the next few days. Let's talk a little a bit about the, uh, let's say, Konstantinovka itself and uh, the positions, the situation with 79th Brigade. As we discussed, the 79th Brigade have already lost its combat capabilities, but the Ukrainian authorities, military authorities, sent 235th Battalion to reinforce their positions and to, under their control, and this battalion was sent to the line of combat contact immediately immediately and after two three or four days of clashes with the russians in the south eastern konstantinovka direction that battalion also lost its combat capabilities it battalion wasn't destroyed completely but probably now it has maybe 60 or 50 percent of personnel and the 79th brigade tried to force this battalion to continue clashes on the line of combat contact but the commanders of this battalion start refusing to follow the orders and now there is a very big clashes fightings between the commanders of these two forces and this, of course, can play, uh, let's say, game in Russian favor. Uh, also, we have reports from the 79th Brigade that during the previous night the Russians tried to attack Konstantinovka, but those attacks were repelled. The Ukrainians suffered additional losses. Now, let's move to... Now, let's say uh, the uh, Kupin's direction. We have additional updates from there as well. The Russians continue destroying and ruining the Ukrainian logistic. During the previous night, during the previous day, the Russians published the video uh, that uh, show us uh, how they were hunting and destroying the many Ukrainian roads, bridges, uh, the Ukrainian pontoon bridges, uh, warehouses in this area. As we know, according to the Ministry of Defense, currently this is the main direction of Russian attack, northern Kupin's direction. Direction. The Russians uh, are gaining momentum. The Ukrainians suffer significant losses. So, of course, to improve the Russian positions, they try to destroy the warehouses, bridges, trying to ruin the Ukrainian logistics completely. And as I understand, according to the allocation, the Russians are about to finish this process. Uh, as for uh, Kharkiv direction, we haven't received a lot of things, just a regular thing, just one detail about the Russian activity in, in between Lukansin, Skushin and Zelone. The Russians 
reported that they managed to improve their positions along Murom River. So to summarize everything as I understand, the Russians reached the first buildings and the outskirts of the village by the name of Zelena. So most likely during the next few days there are going to be very heavy clashes. After that the Russians will establish complete control over the territory. North in uh, Vavchansk direction there is no updates important. The Russians are saying there are still clashes in this plant, in this industrial zone. On the other hand, the Russians reported that uh, in the eastern part of Avchansk, the Russians began counterattacks. So the Ukrainians during the previous days um, suffered significant losses of 82nd Brigade, 36th Brigade, and the Ukrainians were forced to fall back to Vovchi River again. And now the Russians renew their attempts to attack in the eastern part with the even heavier pressure. So this is the situation on the ground. We have a lot of updates about mobilization. Uh, the situation is critical in Ukraine. We got more and more updates of how the Ukrainians made, may, are making more and more attempts to break the border between Hungary and Ukraine. Uh, yesterday, uh, as you know, there was a case and a lot of people discussed that one big car, one big bus with 32, let's say, people crossed the border and uh, entered the territory in Hungary. And today we got more details about that case. According to information, we have 32 soldiers, 32 people that were in that bus belonged to SBU and the Ukrainian police. So they were like a military authorities that probably uh, should be sent uh, to the line of combat contact, but they decided to save their lives and basically they escaped Ukraine. So this is the reason why they managed to get so close to the border. And today we got additional report that another group of Ukrainians in a number of 18 people managed to cross the border with Hungary almost in the same area so as you can see the people are running away from ukraine because they just don't want to die and we have report that uh, for example yesterday there was a very heavy clashes between the recruiters in odessa with just regular medical workers and the medical workers won that battle and today we start receiving report that all over the entire territory of ukraine the mobilization process began between the medical workers so they start hunting recruiters start hunting for medical workers at least in Kharkiv in, and Odessa. So the situation is very bad, as you can see. Today, as you know, is the day of Russia. And most likely Ukraine is going to try, uh, going to make an attempt to attack the territory of Crimea and Crimean Bridge because of this very big holiday in the Russian Federation. During the previous night, there were attempts to attack Crimea with significant number of missiles. But according to information we have, the Russians managed to repel that attack and the Ukrainians haven't managed to, let's say, achieve any results. Anyway, we see that the Global Hawk is flying above the Black Sea, collecting additional and necessary information, and probably the Ukrainians are going to make more attempts during this holiday. And that's it for the short video. Military Summary Channel reminds we condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes to my Patreon, and have a good day. Bye-bye.